Hey y'all, say y'all. Peace and Palo Santa 6. It's your girl, Devani Lika. And today, I have a channel message. I actually just, I just finished reading this book. It's The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. I actually didn't even have intentions on doing a reading, but I finished, I just finished this book and the very last spiritual law, the seventh law is the law of Dharma. And when I read it, I just kind of felt like it was a channeled message that I was supposed to share. Um, one, it kind of it kind of motivated me to get up and kind of stand in my purpose. But ultimately, I felt like it was a channel message that um, the collective that was supposed to hear as well. And then I'm just going to follow up with anything else that the that spirit wants us to hear from. I still haven't decided from the Moonology deck or the um, the Goddess Rising deck um, that I want to use as my clarifier as of yet. But I do feel like there's a very powerful message in this book that I want to read, and I'm going to get into it right now. So, the seventh spiritual law of success is the law of Dharma. Dharma is a Sanskrit word that means purpose in life. The law of Dharma says that we have taken manifestation in physical form to fulfill a purpose. The field of pure potentiality is divinity in its essence, and the divine takes human form to fulfill a purpose. According to this law, you have a unique talent and a unique way of expressing it. There is something that you can do better than anyone else in this entire world. And for every unique talent and unique expression of this talent, there are also unique needs. When these needs are matched with the creative expression of your talent, that is the spark that creates affluence. Expressing your talents to fulfill needs creates unlimited wealth and abundance. Okay, wait, hold on, y'all. Something else I wanted to read. Okay, hold on. Okay, and there's this another part. So it says we must find out we must find out for ourselves that inside us is a god or goddess, an embryo that wants to be born so that we can express our divinity. The second component of the law of Dharma is to express our unique talents. The law of Dharma says that every human being has a unique talent. You have a talent that is unique in its expression, so unique that there's no one else alive on this planet that has that talent or that expression of that talent. This means that there's one thing you can do and one way of doing it that is better than anyone else on this entire planet. When you're doing that one thing, you lose track of time. When you're expressing that one unique talent that you possess or more than one unique talents in many cases, the expression of that talent takes you into timeless awareness. The third component of the law of Dharma is service to humanity to serve your fellow human beings and to ask yourself the question, how can I help? How can I help all those that I come into contact with? When you combine the ability to express your unique talent with the service to humanity, then you make full use of the law of Dharma and coupled with the expression of your, you, your own spirituality, the field of pure potentiality, there is no way you will not have access to unlimited abundance because that is the real way abundance is achieved. This is not a temporary abundance. It's permanent because our unique talents, your way of expressing it, your service and dedication to your fellow human beings, which you discover through asking the question, how can I help instead of what is in it for me? Okay, so I just want to stop there. What I, I love that message. I think it is so, so powerful because breaking my how I perceived it and how I broke it down and digested it was we all have a unique purpose on this earth. Um, we are all here for a purpose. So our job is to figure out what is that, you know, what is, um, our job is to figure out what our purpose is. What is our unique talent? And in finding this unique talent, is what is going to bring you true happiness, true bliss, 
Like, you know how they say if, you do, if you're doing what you love, you, you'll never feel like you worked a day in your life? If you're doing, with you, if you're doing what you love, you'll never feel like you'll, you worked a day in your life. I feel like that that applies to the law of dharma. That's what the law of dharma means. Like, you know, if you're doing what it is that truly makes you happy, if you didn't have to worry about money or time, if money and time didn't matter, because I think for a lot of people, they're like, well, what is my unique talent? And the best way to figure out what that is or, um, you know, what that is, is by asking yourself, like, if money and time didn't matter, what could I see myself doing for the rest of my life that would genuinely make me happy? That's how you find out what your life purpose is. Um, so I think that was just a really, really powerful message. And, uh, you know, it's also the, that that's the best way for you to, you know, actually create long term abundance, you know. So I don't know. I felt like I was supposed to share that. And now I just kind of want spirit to clarify or add on to the message that I have already channeled. But I thought that was really powerful and that my collective needed to hear that like that's just you know if if you know you felt like you know sometimes you get in a place in your life and i and i've seen this for people like they're financially really really successful um financially secure but there's just like a emptiness like something they're missing it's because they they didn't really figure out what their actual purpose was. Yeah, it might have brought them money, but did it actually make you, does it actually genuinely make you happy and fulfill you on a soul level? And I feel like, you know, even if you feel like whatever your unique talent is, like, well, how could this be helpful to humanity in any way, shape, or form? If it makes you happy, your happiness and your bliss is that energy that you emit from being happy and in bliss and content with what it is that you do that is doing a service to the universe. You know, energy transfer. So, I mean, I feel like that that alone is doing a service to the universe. Some way, somehow, somebody benefits from your unique talent or your unique expression of whatever your talent is. All right. So, divine spirit gods, angels, ancestors, cosmic family of the brightest love, light, healing, prosperity, and protection. Please give me clear and accurate messages for the collective. What is it that their divine spirit gods, cosmic family, universe want them to hear the most at this time? Please just block out any interferences as I get these messages across and protect my space. Protect my crown chakra as I get these messages across. And also... Protect and open up my third eye and throat chakra so I can dive deeper into my intuition to get further clarification of the cards that come out today and accurately interpret the cards and the messages that come out today. Thank you so much, Spirit. Ashe, Ashe, and Ashe. Yeah, your girl has been getting real tongue-tied lately when I try to do these messages. Um, Excuse my nails, y'all, okay? Because, look... These last two nails are really struggling to come off, and I just don't know. The other ones fell off far too easy, if you ask me. Um, I actually need to say something to the nail tech, but yeah, these last two are holding on for dear life, y'all, so. Excuse my paws. Okay. Oh, wow. Huh. <laughs> This was actually on the back of the deck and it managed to come out again. Celestial, celest, celestial alignment. Celestial alignment. And I'm already just getting the message of you, like, because what I'm what I'm gonna consider these messages is just the follow-up of the message that I the channel message that I just um gave um with the law of Dharma. Seven spiritual laws of success. Please, please, please order that book. I got it off Amazon. I think it is a good purchase. There's so many other laws in there that just, I feel like it is really just the key to life. I'm honest to God. Um, but it's so much information to try to digest at once. So I like, I made sure I like did a lot of highlight and go back. That's just like my little life Bible. But um, yeah, so celestial alignment. I feel like that is just following up on the message that I already channeled, which is ultimately, you know, you... You being born for a purpose, you have to find your purpose. And you finding your purpose and living in your purpose is bringing you into celestial alignment. Beautiful. All right, let's see what else. Tell me more, spirit. 
and we have alchemy. <laughs> Am I surprised to see that? No. Because ultimately what what the the what the law of Dharma is explaining is you you doing what truly makes you happy, therefore doing what you're actually what what your purpose is to this universe and, and this life experience. You are you can manifest just about anything that you want just by standing in your purpose. It's beautiful. There's also another law in there that's called the law of least effort. And I believe that the law of least effort also follows up with the law of Dharma because it's like, like they say, if you're doing what genuinely makes you happy, you will never feel like you worked a day in your life. So things are just going to naturally gravitate to you. Why? Because you are doing what your spirit was assigned to do when you got here. Wow. Love it. So I'm going to just do these two cards. All right. Let's see. Zed up, zed, zed, zed. He's on the 82. All right. So. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh wow! Beautiful, beautiful. So um, it says um. So the African goddess's name is In Kosazana. I may be pronouncing it right. I may be butchering it. I don't know. But it says is the healer of healers and the teacher of teachers, whose love for humanity makes the corn grow. She dwells in foamy waters, but is known as the heavenly princess. As above, so below is celestial alignment. All right, so her guidance to you is, your natural path is to be in alignment with your own divinity. Oh my gosh, that is so dope. Because I promise you, did I not read that in that book? You following your own divinity is following your true purpose. We are all spirits having a human experience. So you following your true purpose, that is, you, that is you following your divinity. That is so beautiful. But anyway, it says no one can take from you what they didn't give you. How do you want to feel? You think often about what you want, but goddess energy speaks to us in feelings. Celestial alignment is being in sync with the energetic feeling, the frequency of the sacred. Everything that you desire is in that frequency. Match it with your feelings. This is the energy of goddess. Goddess declaration, I'm always being guided in the right direction. So boom, what I got from that is, you know, there's a lot of times where I remember I asked my friend, I'm like, what's your dream car? And she says something like, uh, what the fuck? I'm terrible with cars, y'all, so please bear with me. Fuck. What is that car? God damn it. It's an average car. It's not like, it's not what somebody would say their dream car is. I'm not, it, your dream car doesn't have to be something extravagant. But I could tell that she chose that car because she felt like that car was more in her reach than what her real dream car was. And um, I was like, that's really your dream car? She was like, I mean, well, no, my, my real dream car is, I think it was like a range truck or some train range Jeep or some, some, something like that. And I'm like, but she, then she says something like, but girl, I ain't got that kind of money. So it's like, When you have that mindset, it's like the law, like law of attraction is real. So for me, you are pushing what you truly desire away from you by telling yourself, by telling yourself the story that that's not possible. So what I take from this is like, okay, yeah, you desire this, this beautiful, this, this beautiful love or this, 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 um, this big, beautiful house or whatever it may be. These are the things that you desire. But then right after that, you feel as if it is not in your reach to obtain. Therefore, you never obtain it. So 
this is matching your desires to basically matching your desires, putting your desires and your feelings on the same accord. If you desire something, you have to feel that one, you're worthy of it. And then you have to feel happy about it like it's already yours. That's how the law of attraction works. And that's also being in alignment of what it is that you actually desire. Everything that you want is already yours. I think the only thing that's in the way of that is typically our way of thinking about a situation. So um, I say the best way to get into like celestial alignment because this car has come up before. And I use the saying, like, say you have like a settlement coming, you got a settlement coming, you know, the date is dropping or you got income tax coming, you know, the date is dropping. You don't, most of us, I mean, yeah, you get excited the day that you get it, but you're normally excited in advance. You already pricing trips. We already looking at, you know, different ve pricing, different vehicles that we might want. You're excited now because you know, on this date for an absolute fact, this is coming. So you're excited now. Well, that's kind of the same way you have to think about whatever it is that you're trying to manifest or that you desire. You have to get excited as if it's already yours. The same way you feel about that check that you know for a fact is coming, you have to look at you have to look at your desires the same way as well. All right. Then we have alchemy. <laughs> yeah. And this is this this is giving me getting get into alignment of what it is that you desire and you will see that you are an alchemist and you can manifest anything you truly desire. The only thing that's standing in the way of you manifesting what you truly desire is your desires not matching with your feelings. Cuz you can sit there and say, "Oh, I want this. I want this so bad." And you know, you know but right after it's like, but what's the chances of somebody like little old me getting that? You kill it. Immediately you kill the manifestation. And spirit wants somebody to stop doing that. Stop doubting themselves. But for somebody, for somebody, this message, this message is supposed to be interpreted by somebody is working really hard to get what it is that they desire. Because they don't feel like it'll just come to them. Somebody is working extremely hard to also get what they, des they desire. And they're not really getting much closer to it. They're not really making as much progress that they would make if they weren't chasing it versus chasing and doing something that genuinely made them happy, which in turn serves humanity, which in turn brings abundance and blessings. But anyway, let's go to Queen Nefertiti. I feel like a lot of us have heard of this goddess before. Queen Nefertiti. 76. You know, sometimes we, like, the only thing that's in between us and our desires is us. <laughs> Literally, the only obstacle is us a lot of times. And I can say this really for myself, so I can really relate with this message. But okay, Queen Nefertiti. So it says, her guidance to you is, it is time. It is time you turn everything that life throws your way into gold. You are on the path to fulfilling your purpose. You are in, you are an alchemist. You have the power to bend universal energy. Dare to transmute lead into gold by shifting from fear to love. Everything you desire exists in some form of a loving energy. Match this frequency. Set it in your mind's eyes first. Imagine it. I am loved fully. What does it look like? Taste and smell like to be loved unconditionally. I am happy and healthy. See it. I'm a money magnet. What does it feel like? God is declaration. Everything I touch turns into gold. Yeah, so the universe is trying to teach you how to manipulate energy to work in your favor. The universe is trying to teach you by way of this message of how to really utilize the law of, of attraction. Because that's what the law of attraction is. You have, a, you have a desire. You have a particular intention for this desire. And then you take it a step further by telling yourself that you're worthy of it and then imagining what it feels like to have it. Because it's already yours. But that's the part, I think that's the part where a lot of us 
Lou kind of, we struggle with that part. Most people are, I'll believe it when I see it, people. Most humans operate off of, I'll believe it when I see it. How about you believe it so you can see it? And I think ultimately that is what the universe is trying to get out, get out of this. The channel message from the book, I feel like that is a way for somebody to, another way for somebody to unlock the abundance that they're chasing by just actually doing something that makes them happy, where they're actually not working at all. You don't feel like you're working. I mean, it, it, it may be work to, to, to the outside looking in, but it's not work to you because it's something that genuinely makes you happy and it's actually helping humanity and serving humanity in some type of way. You'll start to see things just come to you in ways that you wouldn't even believe. Like, what the hell? When I first... And I, it was so like I really needed to read that book. Something just like told me like pick the book up and finish reading it. Um, and I so needed to read that. I know when I first started, um, when I first started putting readings on my channel, when I tell you I was so passionate, I didn't give a hell. Like I was probably getting like two views. Like it would take me weeks just to get twelve views. Um, but it just made me so happy. I felt so good. I didn't care about, I didn't, and like, I was spending a bunch of money on cards. I haven't even seen, I'm going to be honest. I haven't, not from my actual channel. I haven't seen any of the money that I have spent on cameras, on microphones, on my cards, on Palisanto, crystals, candles. I haven't seen, I haven't actually got that money back by way of the cards. Like, I, like. I've done some, I've done personal readings and stuff like that, but I don't even think those have equaled up to how much that I've spent on my practice and my purpose. But in other ways, the universe has blessed me. Like I quit my nine to five selling health insurance to fully invest in doing readings. I would sit, I would be sitting on my, I was sitting on my computer selling insurance all day, like trying to shuffle cards and shuffle cards and like, you know, just do readings on myself um, in between phone calls. And I'm like, like during training and everything, I just felt like I was taken away from what it is that I truly desired. I kept getting the same synchronicity over and over again that was ultimately telling me to take a leap of faith. And I did exactly that. And y'all, when I tell y'all, when I first started doing readings, I didn't know how the hell I was gonna actually make money money from doing what I was going to do. I just know it really made me feel good to do. And when I was doing, like I started off actually doing free personal readings for my friends and, you know, anybody who inquired just to show them like, you know, I, I'm good at what I'm doing. Um, and, and I needed it to build my confidence in the beginning because I, I wasn't the most confident in the beginning either. But um, it was like, it was something about me choosing to do what genuinely made me happy that brought me so much financial stability like um you know just just like being open to different different see me I'm a person I, I've realized I do better having multiple streams like small hustles than working a nine to five I genuinely do not like sitting in one place for an extended period of time it it's dreadful to me it really makes me genuinely unhappy um, I like better. I like, you know, but I know I, I, I met a lot of other entrepreneurs who needed help or whatever. And I was getting paid different ways. And it was just like, yo, like I feel like the way my abundance is rolling in is mind blowing. And it wasn't coming from cars. I think it was just me. It was just that shift in energy of me doing what made me happy and helping people while I was doing what made me happy. That brought me the abundance. And I ultimately think that that's what spirit is getting from this. And then ult and also trying to help you control those self-limiting beliefs. You feeling like what it is that you desire is out of your reach or feeling like I have to work so, so hard to get what it is that I desire. When you, when you set that intention, when you put that energy out, the universe responds to feel like they said, they respond to feeling. So if you feel like it's going to be really, really hard to get where it is that you're trying to get or to get the financial security you're looking for, to get the love that you're looking for, to get that dream house that you're looking for, for your business to actually take actually take uh, like take off. The energy like the universe is going to respond with your respond to your feeling with more of what you're feeling.
you believe it's going to be hard so the universe is going to give you more of it i think for me i was so detached and it's so crazy it wasn't like I, now that i look at how i decided to go about like doing readings and everything else it was so i was detached from the outcome i didn't know what would come from it i just know it made me happy and as time progressed and I started doing it more and more and I read you and I read, you know, a lot of the collective's comments, I'm like, yo, this is means everything to me. Like I'm doing what makes me happy and people are hearing what it is that they need to hear. I'm touching certain people. I know for a fact I'm standing in my purpose and somebody needs to hear that. What is it that you are truly good at? What is it that you can see yourself if money didn't matter, time didn't matter? What could you see yourself doing for the rest of your life that would genuinely make you happy and doesn't feel like work? You need to take the risk and do it. Plain and simple as that. The universe will back you up. So this has been the message. Hopefully this resonated. If it did, please like, comment, and subscribe. It is just a beautiful way to energetically donate back to the channel. And until next time, I love y'all so, 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 so much. And peace out.